Right, well, I'm following this. Now I'm deliberately off track a little bit. That's what about uh, 200 meters, maybe about 200 meters to the right of where I'm wanting to be. And that's okay because I'm trying to cut that corner off and then kind of get my uh, position you know, further down. My reasoning is I'm crossing so much of this muck, <laughs> this tussocky stuff here, that if I go in that direction, you know, follow the original route and pick up a path and walk along, I don't think I'm going to benefit much by going that way and along as I am by just going, you know, straight across this stuff. It's not exactly very nice walking, so I may as well just take the whole, just, just do the whole lot across this stuff. I kind of, uh, I've forgotten how yucky walking on this is with my uh, mostly <laughs> local not walking very far walks so it's uh it's good to have a little reminder of uh of what it's like <laughs> but we're heading basically due north uh in that direction the uh the watch is showing about 1.2 kilometers so there's maybe another well, I don't think there's another kilometre of this, of this stuff, uh, but maybe another 800 metres or so. But we're making progress. When I'm looking at the uh, Sun Tzu Ambit 3, which I'm using there, just for the fun of it, and of course I do quite like watches, although I don't get uh, many other watches other than Rolex now. Um, but I have ordered the new, or it's a year old now, um, Fenix six times six times whatever it is um, sapphire edition watch that I will uh, do an unboxing video or bring with me uh, next time I did order it before this trip uh, although I did not I did not order it for this trip because as I think I said I was due to do this start this trip Monday and I think I ordered it, I don't know, Saturday or Sunday or something like that. No, I actually ordered it Monday. I was going to do this trip Monday. But I had to take Dina to the... Oh, I can't remember. Something happened Monday and I couldn't do it. And then I had to get her up to dentist on Tuesday in the afternoon. So that's why I didn't come Tuesday. That's why I came Wednesday. And I ordered it Monday. And it was promised that it would arrive Tuesday, but unfortunately it's, uh, it's still in the post at this moment. But like I said, I didn't order it until Monday, and I was due to be here on Monday, so I never ordered it for this, for this trip. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what it's, uh, what it's like. I've had this watch for a number of years. I probably don't use it anything like as much as I ought to, of course. But I did get a very good deal on the... Uh, Phoenix um, six times, so a very very good deal actually. I managed to uh, add some points owed and uh, discount off, and almost half price. Not quite, but not far off half price. So it'll be interesting to compare it to this. I what I do like with this, and I hope the uh, the Phoenix does the same. It, it has just told me I'm off route. But it's not saying go back that way, go back that way, go left, go left. It's just letting me carry along here. So I rather hope that the Phoenix does the same thing because I know I'm off route. I've deliberately done it. I actually did remove one waypoint, but it wouldn't let me remove any more waypoints because it would have been handy to remove two or three waypoints to get the one where I need to go straight on, but it wouldn't let me do that. Um, so that just will be interesting. One other thing I noticed with with this watch as well, the uh, the Ambit 3, before, they must have updated it, because before, the last I remember, if you were standing still, the GPS signal wouldn't 
point in the direction that you were pointing you had to start walking but now if you're standing still it does point in the direction that you need to go so they must have done an update so that's quite a useful that's quite useful oh I'm gonna keep walking uh, I'll try and remember to tell you about the adder that I saw earlier on at a never stop <laughs> right well looking at the map we are in between Eastern White Barrow which is pretty much in the middle of the screen for pretty much at the top of the hill because that's obviously uh, Eastern White Barrow and that's obviously Western White Barrow so where we want to go is straight down there now looking at the map there might very well be a reason why I chose to go slightly to the left <laughs> which I'd forgotten about because if I carry on dead on I'm gonna hit the Buckland Ford water and where I want to go is about there where my thumb is I hope you can see if it's in focus so I think I'm gonna have to actually go at a slight angle to get back on track so I'm gonna have to go in that direction there so slightly north north uh, west just to get slightly back on track otherwise I'm gonna get right in the muddy stuff so that's where we're heading for down because I suspect my original route probably took me over to uh, White Barrow thing over there oh well it doesn't matter it's all uh, it's all the same thing all right I'm gonna keep walking I'm gonna edit this in when I'm standing between the point over there and this point here I'm gonna edit this in there because I'm walking back to the car and if you remember I was in between these two points and I had a lot of bushwhacking of this this grass stuff here which is just everywhere around here and in fact it reminds me it reminds me of um, the ghost in the darkness just exactly I can just imagine the lions it's quite spooky actually um, you know walking through this stuff and I was literally just over there and at one point to head down I started walking towards this point here I didn't get that close to it but I certainly wasn't a million miles away from it and this is the track here this is the two moors way look look how close I was to it so that was my plan trying to cut a great big corner off to maybe save some time I don't know how long it took me to get from here down to there but even if it took 35 minutes which is what it's taken to get from camp to here it would have been a much easier 35 minutes but not as fun I will say but not as fun but I will just edit this in there cut And we have that more ponies crossing the path as if to illustrate that's the path but some of us are going to ignore it so they must obviously be related oh, they're all they're all ignoring it so all those horses must be my distant relations <laughs> they're all ignoring the path and we're heading roughly in that direction there's a few spits of rain Les has found a, a drink hole which reminds me I probably ought to have a, have a sip of water here actually I haven't uh, stopped at all since uh, I started and it hasn't exactly been fast it's about two it was about two and a half kilometers to go but uh, I have to say it's been hard going most of it has been across very very 
rough tussocky long grass stuff it's been uh, quite hard going it's not easy at the best of times I have to say but I'm definitely not as uh, fit and agile as I uh, as I used to be so I'm just gonna have a, a nibble to eat I'm not gonna take the pack off I'm too lazy to take the pack off I'm just gonna have a Nutrigrain bar or something like that which I got with me some water which I've got here and then I'm just gonna plow on down through this stuff here that might be a track down through there I'm kind of hoping there might be a track through there we might be close to a track so and if I'd have gone directly I would have joined the track a bit further up so whether I've gained or lost anything I don't know that's even if there is a track but I know there is a track around here somewhere okay well it is a track you can see I've uh, just caught the corner of it just <laughs> So very soon I've got to take a sharp left hand turn. It's not the most obvious of tracks I have to say. It's starting to rain. So yeah it's not the most obvious of tracks but it is a track. And then somewhere down here we have to do a, a sharp left hand turn to get to where we want to go. And very very soon. So we're not going to be on this track for very, <laughs> we're not going to be on this track for very long. Okay, well we've made it to the Clapper Bridge. Lassie, of course, has found the river already. So we're seeing no shortage of uh, water and play for Lassie here. I've looked around and I'm, I'm 99% sure this is the same place that. Uh, I camped with Simon and uh, Nigel, gosh it must be six or seven years ago now. And I'm sure I put the super mid in here, although it doesn't look quite as level as it did back then, but obviously time has passed. But I'm sure they put their tents over here, because there were some flattish areas there, but it doesn't look like you could pitch much there at all now so whether water coming down off here has changed the shape of that bit of land i'm not sure but th this is definitely the same place because I, I remember being right next to the bridge super mid was here i remember i had the super mid and i remember flying the the drone i still have the uh, mavic i just never really use it you're not really allowed to use it down here and with all the, you know, all this furore about drones and that type of thing, I just haven't really used it. And like I said, I'd be tempted to bring it here. But these days, just say it's one, someone to report you or something, and it's just not worth it. But I know when I brought it down here six or seven years ago, I flew down this valley around here and over this bridge. Probably where I'm gonna pitch. At the moment the wind is uh, is easterly but it is supposed to change now there is no signal down here there's no signal here at all but the wind is supposed to be from the north which is that way but at the moment it's coming directly from the east but it's supposed to swing around to the north uh, later on so i'm thinking i'm going to pitch the tail northeast and then that will give me protection from the east and the north <laughs> I hope it's not supposed to be coming from any of these directions here so I'm kind of looking at this this area here I kind of thinking that this shrubbery <laughs> I always think of Ronnie O'Sullivan this shrubbery garden or shrubbery bushes or something <laughs> um, but yeah, this shrubbery here might just give a little bit of protection to the back. Although, of course, I can't peg it very far down. Otherwise, I'd be pegging it in the river. But I'm thinking of something around about here. But it's not the it's not the most level. It's not the most level there. It's not as level as I uh, was kind of you know hoping. I will say. 
I'm just uh, looking around this. This spot here actually looks uh, quite nice. It drops down just here. But that little patch in there, I just moved that sheep dropping there. And like I said, it does drop down here. But I could pitch and then I've got protection on <laughs> on a couple of sides with some reeds. I think I'm going to pitch here. So I was going to pitch over by the water and just talking to you, I found uh, somewhere else. Like I said, it's not perfect. There's a bit of a dip here, but that's okay. I can put something under the, under the sleeping mat for that. So that's not a problem. Okay, I think we're going to start pitching. Okay, well I'm not quite sure what time we got here, about four, something like that. Well, it's half past four, so it's still three and a half hours until dark. And as you can see, I've uh, pitched the tap where I said. I put the bivvy down first to get the bivvy lined up. Luckily, it wasn't raining. Just got this bit of a dip here, so I just got to be careful with that. Lassie almost has her own sleeping quarters with the grass back there there's a bit of a sleeping quarter area back there or over there there is just one very minor concern and I really don't think it's going to be a problem because I don't think we've had enough rain but quite clearly water has come through here so quite clearly you can see that there's a high water mark where this is here now i think <laughs> famous last words i think where my bed is is above the high water mark and like i said you know i think the, the water level has dropped in that other place where i was so I don't think there'll be a problem and I'm definitely going to stay and take a chance but obviously you know if you are a new a newbie don't do the mistake that I made a few years ago and get very close to water and have the water literally at your tail uh, that was like the, the camper had to abandon although actually as that happens I could have stayed there all night because whilst the water was very close to the um, trail star when I went back the next time this is about five or six years ago now but when I went back uh, a month later I looked at where the high water mark was and it was just below one of my lower pegs so I probably would have got away with it uh, so anyway it's just something to be aware of and obviously I've noticed the situation here I've done a uh, health and safety briefing, so I'm just going to stay and take take a chance. My head end is is up here. Um, there's no littering of stuff up here, so I don't think it'll be a problem. <laughs> and there's more high water marks over here, and they do look quite fresh, to be honest. So they don't look like they're old. Quite wet, mind you, it has been raining a lot. But look at looking at where they are, they do appear to be not quite where not quite where my bed is. They might come in the corner. Could be interesting. I don't think we're gonna get that much uh, I don't think I don't think it's gonna be a problem tonight. Okay, so I'll just show you around camp. So this is basically north. This is basically north. So I've taken a slight chance because the breeze is coming in more this angle, but it is supposed to swing to the north. But what I've done is I've used the land to its uh, fullest. So I've pitched everything 
relatively high-ish apart from the tail I've pitched quite close to the ground but I've not pitched it to the ground as you can see I've uh, rather cleverly and fortuitously used these reeds here as a bit of a wind uh, a bit of a wind and rain break so I'm hoping and of course I could be wrong but I'm hoping that if rain hammers down at this angle here these reeds will give me protection that's my hope and of course I've pitched everything else on this side fairly close to the ground it might be that this one here needs to get closer to the ground we'll see one's on this side I've pitched quite high uh, because the wind is supposed to be coming in this direction so I've pitched longer lines here uh, for height I've pitched that one obviously in the reeds I can't get that any higher or lower that's as it is and this one here again is on a longish line I don't think it's worth making it any longer because if there is heavy rain it's only gonna you know it does have the potential of bouncing in from you know if it's very heavy and that's that's high enough absolutely no phone signal down here at all in case anyone is uh, ever here so completely and utterly uh, cut off down here which does make a bit of a change the other places there was a uh, signal so it's kind of nice to have no signal although well, sometimes I miss this I must admit but uh, but it is it is nice to have no signal although having said that I should have given them my uh, mama ring uh, yesterday or the day before and I uh, I completely uh, forgot about it which was a bit silly I did say to give her a ring anyway never mind we'll catch up tomorrow and I'll see her on Sunday hopefully for a few minutes we'll have to get back home again right I think given that it's 20 to 5 I think it's time to unpack and get a few things into the into the tap. Well, good evening. I can probably take my hat off. It's only ten past five, and I'm in bed. <laughs> I know it's a bit early normally to get into bed, but uh, and it's still three hours of daylight to go but the weather's really not so brilliant outside it's uh it's quite breezy it's not exactly roasting hot so i don't really see the point in uh, just sitting outside for the sake of it when i can sit inside for the sake of it so that's where we are inside so i've put lasses uh bag and her water bowl or, or, no, or some water in that ditch there just to remind me that ditch is there I have uh, I have taken another health and safety uh, briefing and I think at some point water has definitely been if not all the way over here there is no evidence of water being this far water's definitely been over there but i think there's a long way to go before water comes back up here i think if it had been hammering with rain all day long and then going into the night i might be a little bit uh concerned but given that it's been dry most of today I think even if it rained most of the night I think the chances of water getting up this far are probably slim so I'm going to stay and take a chance on it but it is just something you know I am I am aware of it so obviously it's something I can keep half an eye out for and one advantage obviously with uh, with this I can actually see out right out the back with the height that it's pitched <laughs> so if it was raining you know a lot 
I would get some warning and there is some high ground just in front of me so I could always chuck everything onto this bit of high ground here in, in an emergency but I don't think that's going to happen so this is me settled in now I'm gonna have to sort of rearrange things it's not the most convenient here with this dip here but it's not too bad I can uh, I can work around it I'll probably do my cooking here like I did yesterday and then just put a few bits here that I need other than that most of my other bits I've put behind me but I have to say it's quite uh, warm and comfortable I've actually got under the uh, MLD spirit quilt <laughs> name it drop a name there um, but actually I might get my feet out from under it and just put my feet under this cover thing here which I think would be more than enough and I've just got my uh, shirt and wind shirt on and that's uh, plenty as well all right well I think it's time to make a tea because I've not had a tea since since I left I must remember to tell you about that adder as well okay well it's uh, coming up to seven we've got uh, <coughs> We've got Lassie inside. I called her in because it started to rain again. It's the second little shower. There hasn't been much rain. As you can see, I've got it pitched nicely today. This is probably the best pitch. A shame I haven't got a bit of better space down there, but that's fine. Beggars can't be choosers. This is a nice pitch. Probably... <coughs> probably wouldn't pitch here again either um, out of you know choice in the couple of hours that I've been here I've had two cyclists <laughs> coming down over the hill which is fine they just came down said hello and were gone they were here like 10 seconds they just passed through four walkers on the two moors way which is on that little bit of track that I was on. In fact, if I'd have used a bit more of my brain, if I have one, then I would have, um, rather than cutting across all this rough stuff to come out here, I should have used my common sense, but the two more ways actually comes down to the bottom of the river, around here, over that bridge, and then over the other side. So I actually could have saved myself a bit of hassle coming over this, this hill here. But anyway, we got down here fine, so going back should be easy. It literally is a two moors way to go back, and that takes you all the way um, back. So it's just along here, uh, right onto the track that I was on earlier, and then just follow that widdly, 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 widdly all the way back to the car. I think it's going to be a bit of a walk, um, but doable. But as I say, so I've had uh, four hikers walk right past because the bridge is right here. Literally, you can see the bridge under here. So I don't know what it'll be like tomorrow morning. It's a Saturday tomorrow, whether it'll be very busy or not. I don't know. We'll have to see. It might encourage me to get going, you know, a bit quicker in the morning. We'll see. <coughs> Lassie Bucks at everybody who... Uh, comes by which is probably a good good thing good uh, secure good security but I don't think anyone else will be around now I'd kind of be surprised if, if they were coming up to seven they've probably all found their campsites or gone home by now I would imagine but anyway I'm watching uh, Captain America a winter soldier like I said there's no signal down here at all but luckily I've got uh, about six films on the tablet still to watch so I've got plenty of entertainment for tonight and tomorrow morning before I get before I get going I tried to try to download a couple of others from home and indeed from here and they they didn't download but that's okay I um, I got what I needed to get I've got plenty I'd be a little bit sort of concerned worried if I ran out of films I must <laughs> I do like watching films <coughs> so 
so anyway that's it probably for for the moment I'm gonna carry on watching my film Lass is eating her dinner good morning it's uh, just gone half past nine and I'm awake I've had my breakfast and had uh, ha well, had one tea and having a second tea uh, we've just had five minutes ago a couple of walkers walked past as I say unless you need an emergency spot here this isn't the greatest uh, spot right on the uh, two malls way right by the bridge where everyone's going to be crossing I wanted to tell you about the adder and I tried to uh, I, I was walking along the path along the uh, um, cattle path really or a sheep track and I was just walking along Lassie luckily was behind me and I'm always looking down I don't know about other people but I, I always look down and I've always done it since I was a child to be honest my teacher and other people have always said you know straight back and all that type of thing but I've always sort of walked you know like this with my feet looking at with my eyes looking at my feet and out here I'm sure that saved me stepping on a couple of adders um, over the years I should have just got my mobile phone out and just taken a just, just taken a picture of it on the mobile phone and that would have made the most sense because this was the calmest I've ever been when I've seen an adder out here some of you know a bit of my history, many of you of course won't. I met my first wife in the year 2000, uh, just over a fraction over 20 years ago. And one of the places that we used to enjoy um, coming out to was, um, was Dartmoor. So we got married in 2004 and even now it still brings a, a lump to the throat hang on a minute nothing like uh, having a cup of tea finishing a tea when you're trying to uh, say words of feeling anyway we got married in 2004 and I didn't bother with a stag night. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know enough people to, to bother with that type of thing. But uh, Sue knew uh, a few girlfriends in Cambridge, so she went back to Cambridge for uh, two or three days, probably up sometime in uh, 2004, and had a stag um, hen night. Me, I came down here for the day. I wasn't camping back then, and I was. Uh, walking around Dartmoor over by Kitty Tor I believe it was and I saw an adder on a rock and it nearly scared the sha sha shushi shusha it out of me of course I would have had um, Bess back then and also would have had uh, Pippa my mum's dog probably would have had both of them uh, running around with me unless unless it was just Bess and I'd left Sasha with with her mum because I had I had another dog who sadly died not long after we got married um, Sasha anyway I'm not quite sure but we certainly would have had Bess anyway but I saw this adder and it was uh, quite a I have to say quite a scary uh, thing and I was walking incredibly carefully after that then the next time, so funny enough, the, so the first time I sort of see an adder is um, just before getting married. Very sadly, Sue died in 2010 of uh, cancer. She fought this thing, lost a leg um, to it for three and a half, nearly four years. And sadly, it caught up with us and she didn't quite make it. The well, sad, saddest day of my life that was by far. Um, Anyway, I don't think it was that year. I didn't really do any walking in 2010. Didn't, <laughs> didn't feel like it for obvious reasons.
I started walking in 2011 and I was like walking towards Little Neeset and that was just in the middle of a overgrown tussocky boggy wet area and once again there was another adder I almost stood on it that was it was so close my foot was actually started to go down and I just moved my foot to the side but he slivered off pretty darn uh, quickly it was gone before I had a chance to do anything and I probably felt even more scared that time to be honest because that time it just disappeared into the grass the first time it was on a rock so when I kept walking at least I knew it was still on the rock So I was incredibly nervous that time. Anyway, I was like walking, you know, today across that rough stuff. Grass and tussocks and everything. And I saw the third adder out here. And I must admit, this time I was the calmest ever. I was um, very, very calm um, with this one. And Lassie, luckily, as I say, was behind me. And I said, Lassie, wait. And me walking up to it, it didn't move. Me saying Lassie didn't move. Me undoing the... Well, actually, like I said, I should have just got my phone out and just got a picture of it. But I think I was trying to be a bit too clever. So I undid the zip to my bag to get the camera out of the little pouch I keep on my hip. And then I was trying, I put this, the uh, microphone on the top and just that clickety click sound of just trying to attach the, you know, the plastic to the plastic of the microphone to the top of the camera, that click sound, that sort of plastic to plastic sound. It obviously heard that and that didn't feel natural to it and it slivered off. So we slivered away into the grass and never to be seen again. I was going to make no attempt to um, to see where it went. I'm not <laughs> I'm not Steve Irwin or anything like that. To start rummaging through grass trying to find uh, trying to find snakes. But anyway, so I found uh, it was my third snake adder. In well, I've been coming up here now 18 years at least because I started with Sue in about 2002. It's now 2020. So in 18 years. Of coming up here and it's been a few times that I've been up here I've now seen three adders in 18 years so the first one was 2004 just before we got married the next one was about 2011 <laughs> just after she died and then 10 years after she died I see another adder um, so I don't know whether we have another 10 years before I see another one because she died in August 2010 so it's kind of like I don't know I don't know whether there's a connection between adders. I don't go in for this hocus pocus connecting stuff, but there's certainly a bit of a irony there. Anyway, I partly um, I just wanted to mention about um, about that, and the other thing that I wanted to um, talk about. So, as I mentioned earlier, I've been following Paul Ness Messner, some of his YouTube um, videos, and I'm on his. Uh, Facebook group page and one of the comments or one of the questions that someone posted on there was that he wanted to go wild camping but it was the first time he bottled it because he was too nervous to go and maybe someone wanted to go with him well my message to that is is yes find someone to go with is certainly an option the other option is just wait until you're ready just don't push it um, I started collecting you know I'm I don't know if people on that group know but you know I'm <laughs> very well known for MLD and I was buying MLD stuff way before I was ready to be using it a long time before I was ready to actually use it and I, I was buying buying this and buying that and I was taking it up to Cheddar and I was just pitching it in fields and just playing with it in the field, you know, away from anybody and just sort of, you know, having some you know, cups of tea and that type of thing with it. So kind of like getting used to 
pitching it but not actually sleeping in it. It probably sounds a bit silly but it's what I did. And I also did very, very, very small um, videos on my phone. So if you go back far enough, you're going to have to go back like eight odd years or something. But if you go back eight years, then you'll see me starting out with, uh, with, with my phone, different phones, this obviously now, but starting out with my phone and I was just walking around and recording things and talking into the camera. You never, I never showed my face at that time. I was far too nervous to show my face. <laughs> Not that you believe it now. Um, and I just did a one take cut of different shelters. Sort of like gearing up to, to getting out to using it, but just not quite brave enough to do it. And I had a few nasty, unpleasant comments from a few nasty, unpleasant people. Oh, you've got all this expensive gear, why don't you get out and use it, etc, etc, etc. You know, usual rubbish. I just ignored it, you know, basically I started collecting the stuff on and off in probably summer, autumn of 2011 and then I first went out in March 2012. I just like used the winter to get myself prepared for it and then I went when I was ready, when, there's, when the weather was reasonable in March. So, you know, don't think just because you've got a tent that you have to go out immediately and use it oh, you know that you're the big I am I'm not aiming this at this, this or anybody but you know just just wait until you're ready if necessary you know don't just think oh I got to go out straight away because everyone's going to take the PI double S you know do it when you're ready and you will enjoy it you know all the more the other thing that I did when I first went was that I deliberately when within reason as far away from the car as I could I knew I had the best equipment on that occasion actually funny enough even though I had a lot of MLD stuff I took a, a Hilleberg tent with me which I used that once and I think I used one other time uh, the Staker I never really used it again uh, but anyway by buying you know something that I knew it wasn't going to move and whilst I knew the MLD stuff was not going to move. Obviously most of it was tarps and that of course at that time was a little bit I was a little bit unsure of it even though I loved the idea and I knew that I would get used to it very quickly but the very first time I just wanted the security of a tent I will admit. So the very first time I did take the stake uh, I sort of kind of chickened out from the MLD stuff which is a bit of a shame but it's I was using the MLD um, shelters within the second uh, camp, I'm sure. And at the first camp, I went as far away from the car as I possibly could. And I think it was like four or four kilometers or something like that. It, it, was, it was a couple of hours walk. And I basically just did that so that I would not get the temptation to you know to head back to the car so I did that so that I wouldn't um, you know get caught so I, so I did that so it would be less likely that I would chicken out and make a mad dash back for the you know for the car and then and it worked very well and I enjoyed it and you know it's, it's on video Tony Hobbs first camp or something like that then you know it's on there eight, eight odd years ago and it was a bittersweet um, thing because Sue never wanted to go camping, uh, which was a bit of a shame. I think if I'd have been doing it and then met her, I probably would have talked her into it. Um, but you know, it is it is what it is. You know, we had many a good walk up here. We came up here almost once a month for I don't know three or four years. So, you know, we had really good, enjoyable, happy times up here, day walking. We get here first thing in the morning and, and go back, you know, at dark, really. We stayed as, just walked, depending on, on the conditions, the time, the time of year, time of light and everything. And it was very enjoyable. And I, I must admit, I do miss those days a lot. It's not quite the same now. 
but you know it is what it is that's life and we have to put our best foot forward and and carry on and maybe that's another reason why I tend to come back here more because whilst yes it does feel a bit lonely um, at times as well like watching films a lot um, you know I know it's just like kind of like home to me even though it's not home as such but it feels like home and like I said I just feel comfortable here and I feel less comfortable going to other places apart from the fact the further away as well I'm not quite so easy to to get to so that kind of answers a couple of questions or comments you know about other places hopefully one day I'll get around to doing it I'd like to try and do something in the lakes or something next year or the Peak District or go back to uh, the Brecon Beacons or something it's all very well saying it it's actually doing it but uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I'm more than happy in my own little way coming down here so and I'm still out in the middle of nowhere camping in some beautiful equipment with beautiful surroundings around me so you know what else could be better to be honest it's better than being stuck at home sulking moping and feeling sorry for yourself <laughs> uh, Dean is not interested in, um, in 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 this type of thing she has her own struggles with life so you know I'm kind of busy with that at home okay well that's all the uh, that's all the that's all the low part. I'm going to get back to uh, watching Extraction um, on on Netflix, which I downloaded, and you know slowly, you know slowly packing up, and then I get going by 12. I think I think I need to try and be gone by 12 because it's quite a long walk, quite a long walk back, and this is going to be quite a long talky video. This is probably going to be one long video today, so. Good luck to uh, anyone who, who gets, you know, gets through this one. One thing I've uh, just noticed is there's some, um, I think the camera got a bit damp the other day. I'll have to maybe take the lens off and just let a bit of air get in there or something. There might be some condensation on some of this footage. So I'll keep it, it's what it is you know hopefully it's okay okay well it's 11 o'clock <coughs> and we've packed most things away the shoes and socks were still quite wet but that's completely and utterly immaterial because to get back to the main path over there absolutely guaranteed soaking wet feet just getting through this marshy boggy area there just guarantees wet feet so it doesn't matter pretty much everything is put away I've uh, closed up Les's bag put everything in my pack the only things left are the the tarp to collapse down which obviously goes on the front of the pack tripod which I didn't use this time uh, pegs mats camera pouch and lead all of which will go on the outside of either me or the pack it really is just down to uh, collapsing the the tap now and that's uh, and that's it for this little uh, expedition I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye now might get a chance later on there's no real reason not to it's just you've heard me waffling enough as it is about sort of prolonging the waffling agony so and it is really just a, a long straight walk back to the car I think it's going to take a couple of hours at least it's uh, quite a little way from here so you know thank you once again for watching it's been uh, an enjoyable and a slightly different uh, trip it's gonna be one long video I do apologize back to the one long video I will get back to doing some watches at some point but 
I know most of you won't be missing that, but uh, I, I will do. I will do something more on watches in the future. <sighs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button because it's important. And obviously, I will see you again. All right, that really is enough of me talking and waffling. I'll see you all again as soon as I can. You know, it's been very enjoyable. I hope you've all enjoyed it and had a tiny bit of inspiration from uh, from all my nonsense. And I will, I will see you again soon. Goodbye. Okay, I've got a confession. Those of you who know Dartmoor might have picked up on this already. But when I did that last piece of video on the way back to the car, which was edited in, you know, earlier, I'll put this in at the end of the video. It's like a sub-ending bit. I was thinking I was on the Two Moors Way. I was going in the same direction as the Two Moors Way. It's just I wasn't on the Two Moors Way. I was on another path coming directly to the top of uh, this hill here, which goes down here and joins the Two Moors Way down there. So when I turned off thinking I was joining the Two Moors Way, I wasn't. But I was at least on a path that was parallel to it. So it's kind of just as well that even though I took the wrong path, path I took came in exactly the direction that I wanted to go. Indeed, two good things out of it. It probably cut the corner because two more ways is a bit like that. And also, it's a bit shorter and also quieter. I'm sure given a Saturday and I can see a few people walking down there on the Two Moors Way that there would be more people but coming across here I didn't see anybody so that was definitely a bonus so a little bit of a lesson there just make sure you're absolutely on the correct path uh, but in this instance I was on the I wasn't on the path that I wanted but I was on on a path that went in the correct direction